Okay, good. All right. Thank you very much for the invitation, and uh, you know I'm very glad to visit virtually to Taiwan. It's an unfortunate time uh, for everyone, especially for the people in the U.S. Um, but you know we managed to make some science done, and also especially for this uh, result we released the summer this year. And we um, we observed some excess events in Zeno one time. Actually, the excess events was observed in a, a, even a well, uh, I think more than uh, one year ago, we had a, a very thorough check of all the possible reasons that delayed the paper. But we uh, eventually put the paper, a very long paper, detailed analysis out this summer. Um, so for Xenon, uh, I just give a little bit introduction. And the uh, we actually started the Xenon experiment uh, um, more than 15 years ago, and it started with a very small detect called the Xenon. 10 uh, with only 15 kilograms of target liquid xenon. And gradually we build a larger and a larger detector. So our mission is just to build a very large target mass, low background detector, low threshold detector using liquid xenon to search for uh, wind dark matter. And, and now we can also search for other rare events. The experiment is located in Grand Sasso underground lab in Italy. As you can see from these pictures, um, these are the central uh, detector and, and it's just getting bigger and bigger, but the principle is always the same. I will explain it a bit how it works. Um, in, in below these lines are showing the target mass and also the size of the, the, the detector, the central detector um, looks like. And this number um, 10 to the negative 43, 10 to the negative 48 centimeter square, you can see this is a cross section. This is the, uh, the sensitivity to wind nucleon spin independent uh, uh, scattering cross section. And for xenon, one time we have reached to 10 to the negative 47 centimeters square. Xenon N ton is a new detector um, as uh, currently being commissioned and it will reach 10 to the negative 48 centimeters square. There are other uh, experiments using the same technology uh, like Panda X in China and LZ in the US, um, they would also be able to reach this 10 to negative 48 centimeter square in the next few years. And eventually we want the you know, Xenon collaboration it's evolved into the so-called Darwin is the ultimate uh, dark matter wind detector probing down to 10 to negative 49 centimeter square with the 50 tons of liquid Xenon. That's about annual production of the world production of xenon in the world. So this we call ultimate because that will eventually probe in the background from neutrinos. Neutrinos will have a coherent scattering that also produce the background. And uh, from solar cosmic neutrinos that becomes an un unavoidable background. The collaboration now are including uh, um, 28 institutions from uh, 12 countries. Um, we, in Asia, we have, in East Asia, we have three Japanese universities and recently Tsinghua University in, in mainland join us. The principle, um, we call it the liquid xenon time projection chamber, uh, the target liquid xenon, um, we condense it into, um, you know, the xenon gas is, of course, is, uh, is a noble gas. And we condense in liquid, so it becomes dense. And uh, so we can instrument a more compact uh, detector using this photomodified tubes to see the signals from it. And uh, if, uh, now if a particle interacts in, in the TPC, whether it's dark matter or ordinary matter, um, ordinary radiation like gamma rays or neutrons, it will produce um, a prompt scintillation we call S1, it's just photons. And this photon will be detected by these PMTs as S1 signal. It also creates uh, electron ionization signals. And this electron will be dripped in a field to this uh, uh, top region where there's gas xenon. There's a much stronger field there to extract the electron and amplify them as a scintillation light. So it becomes S2 signal. So you can think of S1 is proportional to the number of photons produced by this particle. And S2 is proportional to the number of electrons produced by this particle. The total number of 
total energy will be a sum of the number of photons and number of electrons. As the amount of photon and uh, an electron produced here is uh, roughly in the same order, um, but the photons we lose them uh, in, the, in the detector. So only about 10% will be detected. But electrons, we can even detect single electron drift in, in the GPC. That's why uh, if we rely on S2 signal, the threshold can be very low. But you know, for uh, if you want to have a complete energy of an event, you you need both S1 and S2. So the S1 will actually determine the threshold of this type of detector. And it's in the, about uh, 1 keV uh, electron uh, recoil energy. That's our detector threshold. So if any signal produces uh, more than 1 keV electron recoil, uh, this detector will be, we'll see them. And, uh, and if it's a nuclear recoil, um, because the nuclear recoil will lose some energy to heat, so only a fraction of nuclear recoil will produce um, ionization and scintillation. So nuclear recoil threshold is about 5 keV. Now, with this principle, um, so many uh, detectors were built around the world, and uh, it basically looked like very similar. Um, it will have this uh, field cage, and then you have this PMT arrays um, on the top and the bottom. And then there will be electrodes constructed to drift these electrons. And uh, even for PANX, Photon, and uh, LZ, even the PMT is used in these detectors are very similar. So it really um, uh, becomes the, the, the best technology for wind dark matter detection. And the background that can reach is uh, also for electron recall background can reach is also very low, so it can search for other signals. In particular, for this one ton detector, uh, uh, we have actually two ton of active xenon target inside this field cage. And in total, we field 3.2 ton. There are extra xenon as a shielding on the outside of this field cage, but inside uh, the, 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 the vessel. This is how it looks like when we assemble them in the clean room and eventually place it in the, in the vessel and put inside a big water tank. So the water tank, water tank has serves as additional background shielding. So environmental background will not penetrate in, through the water. So we'll be stopped and we'll have less background inside the liquid xenon detector. This is a picture showing how uh, the, the entire experiment looks like in the underground lab. Uh, because uh, we want to avoid the cosmic ray induced the background. That's why all these experiments are located in deep underground. In this case, it's below 1400 meter of uh, a rock. And uh, the pan experiment is located 2400 meter of rock uh, below the mountain, so even better. Um, and here you see all the instruments that uh, supports the, the central TPC. It's a very complicated system, but it has been thoroughly tested for Xenon one ton. And now these systems are used for our upgrade called the Xenon N ton experiment. The data we took for, from Xenon one ton actually started uh, not a very long ago, it's only four years ago, right? If you think about it, we started, you know, one time data taking from four years ago, and it took about uh, one year, a little bit over of the science run, science run one data. These are the best data we use for all these publications uh, in the last few years. And we took additional data for the science run two, but these are just for engineering, uh, testing the new equipment for the Xeno Anton experiment. And then we, we did commission in this detector by the end of 2018 uh, to install the new uh, Xeno Anton detector. So today uh, I will be using, uh, talking about, the, about this science round one. You know, I'm not going through all these results, but mainly we have several WIMP search results published. Um, and in addition to the WIMP dark matter search, we also for the first time, observe a double electron capture of this xenon 124 isotope. Uh, this, of course, is a standard model uh, process, but uh, very uh, difficult to observe because the long half-life. 
we also search for light dark matter. And uh, so and more recently, uh, just a few days ago, we, uh, we put a new paper to search for coherent scattering from solar boron-8 neutrinos. Um, and uh, but today I'm going to just focus on this one, the low energy excess uh, we released in the summer this year. Um, I, I talked about the principles of the uh, the experiment. It looks like very simple, but uh, uh, the the signal actually is quite sim uh, simple. If you look at it, it's just S one. It's the actual event, uh, not from dark matter. Uh, but from a calibration source that, uh, but the dark matter signal at this energy will look like this. So it's not very beautiful, but we have S1 and S2, there's some noises. Um, and then this S1 would uh, look at like this and in the bottom PMT array, these are for this event, there are only four PMTs. C is a signal. And we have uh, at least three PMT coincidence in order to claim that that is actually a physical event. The S2 is bigger and, and it mostly show up on, on the top PMT array. We use this signal to reconstruct X, Y positions. You can see very localized. It also has a pattern on the bottom so for energy reconstruction. Based on this signal, we reconstruct S1, S2, NH and X, Y, Z positions. And then you know, for each event we detect it, we plot them in, in such a S2 versus S1 space. And you see two populations. One is the black ones and, and the other is the red ones. These plot, these events are coming from the calibration source. Um, for the electron recall, we use the beta decay to calibrate. For nuclear recall, we use neutrons uh, to shoot the, the liquid xenon target. So the the wing dark matter would show up in the in like the red dots, but other most of the background like uh, or um, dark matter electron scattering would show up on the black dots, or neutrino electron scattering would also show up in the in the black dots. And you see there are some difference. By using this difference, uh, we can um, choose the the which type of events we uh, we are looking for for different type of physics. Just briefly for the nuclear recoil um, channel, um, we are looking for uh, events in this lower band. Right? And this is actually uh, from our uh, physics search data. You see there are not many events in this uh, nuclear recoil region. And these each dot is an event. And this dot we even, um, calculate the probability whether this is event from background or from uh, uh, dark matter. And then none of them are look like a, a, a from uh, wind dark matter. So we place all these limits. It, it's a little bit uh, not uh, exciting to place limit, but this is the, so far the best limit uh, we can uh, we achieve. And above this uh, these curves, uh, the parameter, theoretical parameter has been excluded. So this one is just a recent uh, work. Um, we lower the threshold of a detector by requiring less PMT coincidence. So from previous analysis of three PMT signal to two PMT CA signal, and that lower our threshold. And we cover the new region of this uh, uh, dark matter down to three GeV. So now, um, from three to 11 GeV, we also have excluded a little bit more parameters. Um, and you can see other uh, experiments that occurred uh, before. And this has actually reached to a sensitivity that we can see the solar boron-8, solar neutrino coherent scattering, neutrino nucleus coherent scattering, if it's, um, it could show up in, in this data set, but we didn't see any signals. so. Um, it's a bit sad, but we will use the xenon in time to continue to look for the boron-8 solar neutrino coherent scattering. So we are almost reaching this background level for this type of detector at uh, the corresponding to a dark matter mass about 6 GeV. 
So I think a more um, interesting uh, for this year is the election recall uh, signal. As you see, this plot is from the, the new physics search. And there are many of the, the black dots. These are the election recoils. Now, we know most of these events are <clears throat> our, our background. And we know what kind type of background they are. But there are also some new physics uh, sites, such as you know, so, um, light dark matter can scatter on electrons, or solar neutrino uh, can scatter on electrons, not new physics. Or solar axion can interact with the electrons, right? And also some other particle like axion like particle dot photon can be absorbed and produce electron recoils. So there are a full range of uh, new physics that, that can be searched in this uh, green band electron recoils. Um, now, unlike this uh, wind search, we just look for the events in this below this uh, uh, electron recall band. There are many, so we can do a lot of background rejection, uh, ignore all these black dots. For electron recoil, um, there's no need to do this two, uh, um, 2D space analysis because all you need is energy. So you have to sum this S1 and S energy uh, together. And this is done by using uh, this is a simple formula because the energy is really dissipated to two channels, S1, S2. And we have calibration source to get what's the uh, G1, so-called uh, the, the values that uh, convert this S1, S2 to photon and electron number initially produced and multiply a constant value, W value, to get the energy. This works well uh, from, you know, few, uh, from one MeV down to uh, 2.8 keV. This is the lowest energy calibration source we have, but it works quite well. So uh, the energy linearity uh, is determined really in liquid genome is well understood. With this energy, now uh, what we can search is really see uh, energy spectrums. Um, I just briefly go over a few new physics that uh, could be uh, how you will show up in the xenon type of detector. This one is from the solar axions. Um, and, and we are not looking for the Q QCD axions um, because um, that the, uh, um, the, the none, we are not looking for the axion, uh, QCD axion dark matter. So the really um, the, the energy is too low uh, to be detected by this type of experiment. But for solar axion, the energy can go um, into the energy range of xenon detector in a KV range. There are particularly three type of interactions that can produce axion uh, through this so-called axion electron coupling or axion gamma coupling or axion nucleon couplings. And, and these are the, the spectrums uh, produced by the sun and uh, arrive at the earth. And then once it interact with the uh, xenon, uh, it mainly through this uh, axion electron coupling. So you have to, the spectrum detected in our detector for the, for this part, AB, so-called ABC axon, it's uh, proportional to the force power of GAE. And for the prime of uh, uh, axion is proportional to GA gamma square and GAE square. And then for the uh, axion nucleon effective coupling, it also multiplied by this GAE square. So this is uh, expected um, energy spectrum in our detector. Of course, you have to sum them all together uh, depending on these three parameters, how they play uh, with each other and, and eventually show up uh, in, in the detector. For solar neutrinos, uh, solar neutrinos actually uh, is one of the background in our detector, the solar, I'm talking about the solar neutrino electron scattering, not the coherent scattering. So, but that solar neutrino electron scattering rate is quite low. Um, it's uh, only about like about two events per ton per year per keV at this, the blue one. Um, so it's much lower than our other background. So almost negligible. 
but we still include them in our background model. However, if solar neutrino, if a neutrino has a large magnetic moment, for example, in this case, is uh, we have about 10 to negative 11 for magnet, that uh, would produce a kind of uh, sharp rise at low energy. That could show up in our uh, detector. So, so indeed, this can be an indication of new physics from the neutrino physics. Then for other type of uh, uh, bosonic dark matter, like exon-like particles or uh, dark photons, they can uh, interact with the, uh, with the xenon either by absorption through this axial electric effect or um, by kinematically mixed with the, the, uh, the standard model photon. So basically what you expect is a, a kind of uh, energy peak above uh, our background. And that peak rate is proportional to either GAE square or to this kinematic K kappa square. And it's proportional to photoelectric cross-section. So you can, we can also search for any unknown peaks above our known background to, to get this kind of new physics. As you see, um, all the information we can have is the, is the energy uh, spectrum and the rate. And, and we need to understand very well our background in order to search all types of new physics. So this electron recall background and is, is a major background for, for this um, dark matter search experiment. And uh, for xenon, uh, we know that the, the one of the main background is a, a, a source krypton 85 that is contained in Xeno when from the production. So this is all from all the nuclear tests in the last century or the nuclear reactors would produce this isotope and a mix in the, in, in the air. And it has a half-life of about 10 years. So we cannot get them easily, get off them easily. In Xeno, we construct this so-called distillation column, try to remove this krypton from Xeno given this uh, different boiling points. And we actually reach, you know, from a commercial you can buy of 10 part per billion of krypton, you can reduce it to a uh, part per trillion or even lower in our detector. So during the Xeno one time run, we uh, first view the detector with Xeno, then we start to Run the distillation column, we saw our event rate in our detector continuous drop as a blue, and it, it passes in 100 and lux eventually pass pan x to level and eventually reach a level becomes flat. Now, in this region, actually, we also measure this krypton independently, and our expected krypton rate that written contribution to our background rate even lower than what our, we measured this rate. So we know at this point that the krypton is not the dominant background anymore. There's another isotope, so radon is our main background. That's the, um, determ the dominant background in the xenon one ton science run. So this is the starting of our science run one until the end of 2008, uh, 2017. The radon um, is a radioactive gas with a very half, short half-life. It keeps emanating from the detected surface uh, from this uh, radioactive decay. So this radon would produce um, lead to 14, which is a beta decay. So, so it will produce uh, this electron recoils. And we have measured all the components in our detector and, and uh, expect to have a radon level of about 10 micro becquerel per kilogram of xenon. So this is about six orders magnitude lower than the radon level you can uh, you have in your surrounding air. Right? So it's really a low level, but still is the dominant background in the xenon one ton experiment. Of course, um, this uh, lead 14 to 14 beta decay from radon and the krypton 85, they are the internal background mixed with xenon. So they are K 
contributing the dominant, especially at the lowest energy. So as you see, this is our expected background spectrum in Xeno one ton and this is event rate per ton year of target per KEV as a function of energy. And you see that this uh, dark blue, or the, 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 this blue is the lab to 14 from radon is the dominant one, at, especially at low energy. Krypton is much lower. Solar neutrino, uh, the red one, even, even lower. So it's really a kind of a subdominant background in Xeno one ton. You also see some peaks here. Uh, and this peak is coming from our calibration source, Krypton 83M. That gives us our energy linearity calibration. We have a tiny amount left in the detector during the science run. And this peak is uh, quite high energy. This is uh, from Xenon 131 metastable state. This is actually activated by a, a neutron calibration. This one, Xenon 133, also is also activated by Xenon 130 neutron activation during our neutron calibration. So this plot is our expected background that near a neutron calibration. We have also a calibration run without, you know, farther uh, away uh, from the neutron calibration run. So we expect much lower. So we have to separate these two uh, part of data in order to do such analysis. In total, there are 10 components of electron recall background. And these are all the, the the expected contributions. And the most important, if you look at at the lowest end, is about uh, 60 events per time per year per KEV. And we use this to fit to our date, measure the background rate. And uh, this is the result. So all each dot is, is of course, this the measure the um, rate, also in events per time per year per KEV. And and different components add together, the fit looks like pretty well. It's the first by first look. Um, however, if you look more uh, carefully in the lowest energy being a uh, few beings, um, there are some events is uh, over the background. And uh, we look at more carefully at the lowest 30 KeV. And uh, these are the few event, few beings that you see a continuous increasing at low energy. But the, at the lowest, the one kV is matched with our background, including the efficiency well. So these are the uh, the few. Uh, these are the events that we um, we got either excited or at the beginning a little bit worried. Um, there are also some in other beings. You know, there are downward fluctuation, upward fluctuation, even for a single beam fluctuation. Um, that that's normal. You know, from such a low background experiment. And in this uh, lowest energy region, one to seven kV, um, we expect 232 events plus minus 15 events, but uh, we found 285 events. So that's uh, about 3.3 sigma of fluctuation. First, we want to check whether our detect analysis has some uh, bias, and uh, we have checked, you know using the energy calibration from another radon source um, that produced similar energy spectrum as a background and it fit quite well with our expected. We don't see a, a rise at the lowest energy. We also look at other possible instrumental background and there's mostly dominant like for, from the surface or so we could accident coincident. But since we are looking for electron recoil signals, these two backgrounds are very uh, less contributing to the electron recoil. We even, uh, you know, maybe there are some beta decay at the really low energy has some strange shape because uh, in, the, in, the, in, in the database, it seems it's not consistent from one database to, to the other. And there are even new calculations from expert to study beta decay low energy. Um, there are about 6% of uncertainty at this lowest energy, but um, you know, we need about 50% in order to account for our excess. So unlikely from our analysis, there's something wrong. 
then we uh, look for um, not new physics, uh, but look for possible standard model background. One standard model background is uh, argon 37. You know, argon 37 is also there's a trace element in the air, and that would produce a 2.8 kV uh, electron recoil, a peak. And um, if there's a tiny leak of air into our detector, then there will be argon 37 produce a peak. And fortunately, we also have a krypton uh, measurement in the detector. Krypton is also an isotope in the air. So based on our krypton measurement in the detector, we can estimate uh, in total maximum how much air is leaked into our detector. It's less than one liter per year. We also measured this argon 37 concentration around the xenon one time experiment by people studying all this argon 37 for nuclear explosions. And, and the found is less than 3.2 millibacro per, per cubic meter. And, and to multiply this number together, um, we expect less than five events per ton year uh, in, um, in our data. And to explain that excess with argon 37, we would require 65 events per ton year. So this doesn't seem to be a, a, a good explanation. In addition to that, we, we fit this excess with a peak. Um, and uh, the found the peak, the best the fit is 2.3 plus minus 0 0.2 kV, and it's not 2.8 kV. Um, we later, we also, after this publication, we also released unbinned event by event uh, energy information in this link. And so you don't have to digitize this bin the data, which sometimes give you bias of the peak, especially if you bin them in one kV. So just take this unbin event by information, you can do a better fit. So argon 37 cannot explain expressive observed excess. Uh, what we found is another source is a tritium um, could also could be a possible explanation. Um, because tritium is also, you know, tritium is in the hydrogen, and we have hydrogen water in the xenon, and also the hydrogen uh, uh, in xenon, it, it uh, can, you know, small fraction of tritium can produce a beta decay at the lowest energy. Now, the water in xenon is, uh, um, is, is uh, um, can be estimated based on our latitude. It should be at one part per billion level in our xenon. But to explain the observed excess with the tritium, we would require a 100 part per billion of water in our xenon. So another effect of 100 higher. And uh, also typically our purification system would remove this, this uh, hydrogen, but we are not sure because there's no direct measurement at such a low level. We are only expecting about three trillion atoms per kilogram of xenon um, if it's actually this excess due to trillion. You can fit this excess with a, a trillion plus our known background and, and uh, it can fit with the, uh, and it's better than our background only hypothesis uh, with 3.2 sigma. And uh, so, so this um, is possible explanation, but we are really not sure. So without all this uh, confirmed standard model explanation, then we look for, or we also put two or three, uh, two um, interpretations of possible new physics. One of course is solar axions. And um, this, uh, um, and I already explained this spectrum and, and depending on this the GA, EGA, gamma uh, couplings, you can have some of these wiggles in our structure. And this is uh, um, the fitted background. And it actually can fit the favor, uh, it favors over background only hypothesis by 3.46. So even better than a trillion, uh, if you think about it. Um, and we, we derive all these parameters in, in, in inscribed in, in the cubic, but there are three parameters in this one. And uh, it, there are more plots in the paper, but I just put this one here. It's uh, GA gamma and GAE. 
uh, coupling. Uh, the blue can fit our data well, as about uh, three times 10 to the negative 12 for GAE. And, uh, and it's consistent with the previous uh, um, solar neutrino measurement has a limit here. And, uh, but it's uh, uh, in kind of strong tension with uh, this astrophysical constraint from red giants and white dwarf dwarfs. And, and later following our paper, there are some other papers uh, proposed that we should include a so-called inverse primal curve scattering in our uh, calculation at rate that would uh, alleviate the tension uh, with the astrophysical constraints. So I think uh, uh, we uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, didn't consider this inverse primal curve. We should include it in our future analysis. For solar axions, uh, actually the shape um, can also fit with the, with the, the solar neutrino magnetic moment uh, uh, with a value of this is one with um, about, you know, our range is from one to three times 10 to the next 11 for magnets. And, and that uh, uh, has a 3.2 sigma over the background only, only hypothesis. And uh, it actually um, is consistent with the other direct measurement like from a solar or reactor neutrinos, but uh, it's also is in strong tension with this uh, astrophysics constraints. Then for all these other searches with a, a peak, like uh, the, the dark photons or exon like particles, if you just fit this, I already showed this one, uh, the 2.3 keV peak has a local significance of 4.0 sigma or global significance 3.0 sigma. And uh, and that, uh, you know, if there is a 2.3 keV action like particles or a dark photon that, that could explain the signals. Um, but, you know, with this, uh, we, we shouldn't claim it just with a kind of peak there. What we did, we um, put the limit here. And you can see this is in a one time limit on the GAE coupling for action like particles and for the, the kinetic mixing car pattern for the dark photons. And at this two or uh, three kV region, our limit is, is worse than our sensitivity, um, expected sensitivity because of this excess, but still is the best limit so far covering from one to 100 kV range. Okay, almost at end, uh, I don't know how much time I have. Um, now, there are a lot of uh, theoretical, um, interest um, and uh, this I think I, I look at a few uh, three months after the paper release I mostly talk about solar axion solar neutron bosonic dark matter but there are also um, a boosted dark matter inelastic dark matter game, or some other exact exotic uh, interpretations so I think that's uh, something uh, quite interesting um, um, and some even we didn't uh, think about it and uh, we will continue to look into these new things. There's some, some of the paper even went, got into the PRL, is, uh, including those uh, that uh, include this um, inverse primal curve effect that would alleviate tension uh, with astrophysical constraints. Now, so um, Zeno one ton, of course, is retired, and uh, we are currently have a new instrument Zeno N ton, it has more than, uh, it's three times the mass of Zeno one ton. And we have reduced this radon to reduce electron recall background. And we also reduced the nuclear recall background to have a better wind sensitivity. So the, the experiment is already all assembled and currently we are commissioning all the new instruments. These are the few new instruments that we put, including the TPC, the liquid purification that improve the signal and especially the radon free pump and the radon distillation system to remove the radon in our xenon target. The expected uh, electron recall background uh, we put in this paper is still mainly dominated by the radon, 
But you see that in this energy region, solar neutrino, the standard model solar neutrino electron scattering is the second highest background now for xeno n time. And this is about the factor of six lower than xeno one time. And uh, this is just estimation uh, with uh, some exposure of xeno n time when we can verify the xeno one time signal. It depends. Uh, within a few months of operation, we should be able to confirm or, um, or maybe can tell the difference between the chilean and the uh, neutrino uh, solar axioms. Of course, the main goal for xeno anton is still looking for wind dark matter. And we have also reduced the background a lot. And uh, we expect to run this uh, detector for um, 20 ton year. Uh, which means uh, we have four times in the fiducial volume, so about five years of running, eventually reach to the 10 to next 48 centimeters square for the spin independent interaction. You see the Xeno one times right here, although it's the best uh, so far in the world, but we have a lot to go to cover in the next five years. So uh, I will stop here. Um, the, the Xeno detector really make a lot of uh, progress in recent years, and uh, we expect more uh, results in the next few years uh, with the Xeno N time, but also from Pan X photon in China and the LZ in the US. Thank you. <laughs>